Yo, what's up? We out here. Yet again, another episode of Setting Sail here with the Buff Missionary. And as always, like, subscribe, share this with someone. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything to do it, but it can be a benefit to a lot of people. So go ahead and do that. And uh, this episode, I'm going to be talking about something that happened uh, a couple weeks ago. So I was actually in Virginia yet again. And it was like deja vu because uh, I was there helping my parents finish packing up the house to move from the state that I consider to be my home. And it was very surreal for a lot of different reasons. And, you know, it's wild to think that uh, this big move for my family was the big picture going on around my parents experiencing COVID um, and that's what it came and interrupted uh, obviously when something like that hits it's like that's all you can think about and that's all that's going on but there was a lot going on outside of that and this big move was was a big part of that um, so what I want to do is zoom out and away from the COVID experience to give you guys the bigger picture and to see a little bit more context of the situation and why this matters to us uh, and for you as well. So personally, <laughs> I got I got love for Virginia, all right? But I've been telling my folks that uh, y'all need to get out for a long time. And it had nothing to do with me disliking Virginia or anything like that. But uh, there were a lot of concerns that I had for them, the situation that they were in, um, and, and those were kind of the reasons why I said they needed to move, not just to get out of Virginia, but to be closer to uh, my brother, his family, uh, some of my mom's family, and so on. And the primary concern, the reason I say that with my brother in particular, is, well, it actually started back when me and my siblings started moving out from home, going to college, and all that kind of thing. And empty nest syndrome, it's a real thing that parents go through when all their kids begin to leave. Like you have mom and dad spending all their time, effort, resources, uh, pouring into their, their kids. And then the next thing you know, they're gone. So it's like, what, what purpose do I have now? What do I do now? And for a lot of parents, they struggle with that. And my mom was one as well. And so <laughs> that, that, was, that was one big reason. But another one was the actual church. So uh, on a home life, things were kind of interesting there. But in a, in the church where we kind of grew up in Stanton, Virginia there, um, a lot of families, a lot of the bigger families in that church had been moving out progressively over the years. So I think they were down to just very few members. And having small churches is not unusual within Adventism, especially in, in these rural areas. But... I didn't want my parents to be in a situation where uh, the the spiritual community that they had was so small. I wanted them to be able to take advantage of having more people around, more more spiritual encouragement and, and insight to take advantage of. So that was another thing. And it's it's funny because they there seemed to be a lot of hesitancy to move. Obviously, moving is a big thing, especially when you've devoted so much time and energy to a particular location. But something that I learned from that and, and kind of realized to apply to my experience and the experience of those that I kind of see other people in, and even myself, of course, of course, is that very often there's, there's many times where we stay in places we know aren't the best for us because we're afraid to move. That fear of, of moving and experiencing something new holds us back and, and keeps us in a situation that we already are perfectly aware is not the best for us and that we're not really flourishing and growing in. It's interesting. So you have to ask yourself the question, what's the cost? What is the cost of being in a situation that you know is not the best for you, where you're not going to be able to grow and learn as much as you can, but 
there's that fear that's keeping you from doing something about it. What what is that going to cost you in the long run? Well, I think about the cost in terms of my dad's time. For example, uh, later in his in his career working with the postal service, um, the places where he had to work at first it was in Charlottesville, Virginia, which is about an hour away from where we live in Stanton. But later on. Uh, something happened with that branch and he ended up having to go to work in Richmond, which is two hour drive. So you're talking about, (laughs) you're talking about two hours, one way to get to work, two hours to get back. And like, I worked with him at this job when it was in, when he was still in Charlottesville and yo, the stories I could tell you how tired I was, granted I was working two full-time jobs at the same time, but how tired I was just working that one job driving one hour, eight hour shift, an hour to get back home. Just just that in and of itself was, it was too much. I don't know how he was able to do it going two hours each way. You're working a full eight hour. If you're working overtime, you're working 10, 12 hour shifts. And uh, eventually uh, he ended up having to get a place to stay in Richmond during the week or for a few days at a time so that he could do that. But again, you ask yourself, what's the cost? Because I'm not at home. My brother's not at home. My sister, she's gone to college and she's graduated. She's doing her own thing. My mom is at home alone dealing with the things that she's going through. So what is the cost? What is the cost? Uh, Not only that, but man, deer? (laughs) Deer are a real thing. And uh, I can't tell you how many deer my dad hit driving to and from work. And... It, it's amazing. There was one time in particular where we had this this black station wagon, and <laughs> it was one night he went out to go to work and he he hit a deer and drove up onto the bank on the side of the road. These old country roads, narrow, and he flipped it over. And the amazing thing was when you ask him about the experience, he remembers sitting on the roof on the inside roof of the car, like not in the driver's seat or anything like that. He's sitting on the ground on the roof, on the inside of the car while the car is upside down. I don't know how to explain that, but that's what happened. I mean, thank God he, he didn't even come out of there with a scratch, even though the, the sunroof of that vehicle was completely shattered. Uh, other side windows and whatever were completely shattered as well. Crazy story, but that was just one time out of many that he hit a deer going to and from that job and you're already kind of tired and so on. It's a long drive, et cetera, et cetera. You get what I'm saying? But again, we're asking this question, like what is the cost? And so you think back, as I mentioned, my mom is at home, uh, isolated from family and uh, mentally isolated, being there by herself, spiritually isolated because the church is, is not uh, really flourishing or anything like that. And so you find that this is this is where for her a lot of these mental health struggles began to develop inside of this within a comfort zone. And that's the irony. Like I'm talking about, we find ourselves in a place that's not really benefiting us, but because we're afraid to leave, we stay there and we end up doing ourselves more harm than good in being there. So Like I said, and I'm going to keep on saying, I got love for Virginia. Virginia's for lovers, right? But in my opinion, they had to go. Had to go. So finally, a couple years ago, my dad retires. And uh, my parents are finally looking to make a move out of Virginia. So this process over the last couple of years was very interesting. Because at first, uh, my dad was looking for, I guess... A different location to continue working to finish out the last couple of years before he re- would retire. So it was looking like North Carolina, South Carolina, something a uh, little, little, just a change of scenery, I guess you could say. And he was pretty open to the options, but nothing was really working out. So Virginia and Richmond in that two hour commute one way was what it was looking like. But within the last couple of years after actually retiring, is when the conversations and the the attempts really started to pick up for them to move. And 
it was looking kind of slim. Uh, there's a housing crunch right now. Even now, it's getting worse. It's a it's a seller's market. So you have you have it where if you want to sell a house, it's relatively easy, relatively easy to do that. But if you're trying to buy a house in a different location, different story. All right. So that whole thing. And if you've ever bought or sold a house before, you know how that process can be. It's not just moving and going somewhere you want to. It's a whole lot of other stuff that are involved with that, too. And I remember talking to my mom early in the process and how she she didn't want to feel like she was starting over. That was her big thing. She didn't want to feel like she was hitting the reset button and starting over because of all the history and everything that she built up in this one place and how in this place that had to become a comfort zone. And that's what the comfort zone does. You want a fresh start. You want to do something different, but you don't want to leave where you have all of this history at the same time. So what do you do? It can be kind of crippling at times. And so we really have to ask ourselves, a lot of times we want a fresh start, right? We want to have a new experience, right? But are we somewhat scared are we scared to take the steps to obtain it are we willing to get out of the comfort zone to reach those goals and to do those things that we want to do so the fear for that unknown ends up becoming greater than your desire to really change the status quo so you end up standing still even though you have this sneaking suspicion and maybe overwhelmingly obvious suspicion that where you are is not the best place for you that where you are in your current situation is killing you inside. And that's kind of deep when you think about it. You know, we do this all the time. We'll stay in places. We'll stay in situations. We will stay in relationships that aren't doing us any good. But we'll stick with it because... We think that the only thing that we, the only, the only thing, we, we think that all we can do is lose in that situation by letting go. But I would argue that it costs you more to stay. It costs you more to stay in those situations. I am going to miss Virginia. I'll probably say that a few more times in this podcast. I am going to miss it, but... I do realize that I had to go. When I think of my own personal experience, we'll get into this a little a little deeper later with uh, different episodes and so on, but growing up in Virginia, very small community, I, I loved it. I loved growing up in the woods. I loved growing up differently outside of the city and all that. But my worldview was very narrow. It was so narrow that I figured I'd spend my whole life in Virginia, in Stanton, just live out my days there doing whatever just working nine to five whatever college was never something i considered really doing especially because i was terrible as a student in middle middle school and in high school so barely graduating high school didn't didn't surprise me or inspire me uh to go pursue college (laughs) and so i decided to just work start working right after i finished high school the funny thing is after that, I realized I needed to go. And for as much as I loved Virginia and appreciated it, I know that that was the right choice. Going out to Tennessee, going to a, a school, a bigger school, where I was able to experience different kinds of people and different kinds of culture, it was just what I needed. I had to get out of the comfort zone that I was in, even though I knew it wasn't the best for me. And that's where I was able to experience the growth, the the launch pad for everything else that I would be able to do and, and blessed to experience in, in my life so far. Now, the other aspect is, when it comes to my parents in particular, God came through in so many different ways along the process. All right? So, when it came to actually selling the house, we live in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I think the, the the road we live on or lived on was maybe a mile and a half long and there's 
four or five other houses on that entire road. And most of them are, are farmers, legit farmers. Like cows are, were my neighbors out there. <laughs> uh, I remember waking up one day, there was cows running around in the yard. Another morning woke up, it's about 30 deer out there in the yard in the fog. It looked mad creepy, but that's what it was. And it might be kind of difficult to sell a house in that location because you have to find somebody who wants that spot, right? But guess what? It was a person who came through, family who came through. They wanted the spot. They saw what it was. They saw the space. They, they could see their vision for that space there. They wanted it. Done deal. Didn't take as long as my parents thought it would. Now, how about on the flip side, actually finding a house? Because now you got to figure out where to go. Obviously, as I mentioned, going down near my brother. And in one of the toughest places to find a home in Ultawa, Tennessee, which is like that that neighborhood and that place is maybe like five minutes from where my brother lives. So it's literally right there. They were able to find a house. And the crazy thing was before this house became available, they were looking all over the place. Cleveland, Tennessee, like half an hour, someplace way out in the boonies, like an hour away from where my brother lived. And even though these were in what was uh, their affordable range, everything was getting turned down. Uh, they didn't really like that about the house, didn't like this about the house, uh, the offer didn't go through, all these things. And during this time, my mom is getting discouraged because it's like, how do I know we're supposed to move when uh, nothing is working out for us to actually move? I'm telling her, just stick with the process. It's how it goes sometimes. Be patient. The right thing will come through when it needs to come through. And so this house in Ultawa comes up, and it's amazing because <laughs> my my brother is the one who went to go and scout out the house, and he's talking to the owners of the house. Now get this. When he mentions that we're from Stanton, Virginia, they know that. Anyone that I talk to has no idea what I'm talking about when I say Stanton, Virginia. Anyone who sees it on the map calls it Staunton because that's how it's spelled. <laughs> if you live there, you know. We, we say it different. But the reality is this little small country town on a map, hardly anybody realizes, but not only did this family know what the town was, but I think, I think one, of, one of the members of the family had actually gone to the same school that me and my brother did growing up. Small Adventist little junior academy there in Stanton, Virginia. How crazy is that? And it may have only been like seven or eight years ahead of us to boot. So because of that connection, they said, we want to sell our house to you. Now, my parents were never going to make an offer on that house because the price that it was set at was a lot higher than their budget. But they were able to work it out and they said, no, 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 we want you to put in an offer on the house, offer what you can. And so they did, and they were able to split the difference and come up with something that worked out absolutely amazing. God came through. God came through and answered all the disappointment in the process to find them a house closer to my brother and to their grandkids, my brother's kids, than anything else that they were looking at. Absolutely amazing. Don't forget COVID. We're talking about all of this. COVID is just a small part of this experience. We have that that nearly took them out, especially my dad in this situation, while all this stuff with the house is still going on. <laughs> the house in, in Virginia has had a a perpetual leaky roof. <laughs> I can't tell you how many how many times it would rain and we got the, the buckets and the pans set out in this area we call the nook uh, just to, to catch the water that's falling through the ceiling. I can't tell you how many times my dad's been up there on the roof trying to patch it up to prevent it from leaking. Never, never could figure it out. Well, guess what? There was an insurance claim, something, all, all that kind of stuff that happened where they were able to get the entire roof replaced. We didn't have to pay for it before selling the house. It's amazing. It's amazing. Now the new family doesn't even have to deal with that. It's absolutely incredible. And then getting down and actually hitting the road, the timing that worked out and with being able to load up everything in that truck. And I'm the one who had to drive that truck. And uh, that, was, uh, that was an experience. I never want to drive something that big again. <laughs> but... It was, it was a great experience.
being able to go through that and see how God was able to navigate everything to work out to make this thing happen. It's not something that we could have done, but it goes back to something. Being willing to take the step out of the comfort zone. And all of a sudden you start to see how God lines things up and makes things work for you to go places you didn't think you'd ever get to go before. I look at it like this. If we pay attention, God is always giving us reasons to say, it'll be all right. God's got this. I got this. I can chill. I don't have to be anxious. I don't have to be nervous because he's in control. And other times I think about this situation. It's like all these things I just mentioned were so big. We couldn't miss it even if we tried to. If we, if we looked at all those things that God did and ignored them, then that's on us. And guess what? There are times in our experience where God is doing big things for us to show us that moving in a direction is, is the right thing to do. And we pass up on it. That's on us. That's on us. What are we missing out on? What's the cost? So, despite everything that's happened, what I'm not saying is that as soon as you take a step out of your comfort zone, everything's going to be dandelions, unicorns, and rainbows. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is that though every level comes with its own challenges and, and new experiences, that's the beauty of it because you're not doing it alone and, and God is there to help you through that. So hopefully you've been listening and you understand that that beauty and that experience is only something that can be gained as you step outside of the comfort zone. So yeah, love Virginia. My folks are down in Tennessee right now. They were able to pick up my brother from the airport from a trip that he went on. And uh, they get to experience their grandkids every day, five minutes away. Absolutely incredible. And I'm here in Michigan, and I got to get down there when I can. <laughs> I'm not bitter. I'm not bitter. But the bottom line is, when you think about these situations that you may find yourself in, really ask yourself, what is the cost? And is it costing you more to stay than to go? Because I can guarantee you, the majority of the time, it'll cost you more to stay. It costs you less to go, even though in your mind right now, you think it costs you so much more to go. It costs you less to go. So go. Get out of your comfort zone and see how God is going to walk with you every step of the way. See the things that he's going to do for you that he wants to do for you outside of your comfort zone. He'll do it. He'll make it happen and he'll give you a story to tell on the other side of it. So, hey, thanks for listening to this episode of Setting Sail. Once again, follow The Buff Missionary on Instagram, YouTube, Setting Sail on all streaming platforms for your podcasts. Go ahead and like and share this with somebody so that uh, you're not the only one who gets a benefit from this. And uh, even, even though, again, liking it or subscribing it doesn't cost you anything, it really helps other people to see it down the line too. So I appreciate it. And as always, to exist, it's not enough. We out here to be out here. So until next time, let it do what it do, baby. <laughs>